Okay, working number 11. Uh, no, I think this is number 10. Number 10 on 3.1. And uh, it's giving us two functions, f and g, and it's asking us first to find f plus g of x. So to do this, all we're going to do is take the two functions and add them together. So we're going to take 7 plus 9 over x. And then we're going to add to it 9 over x. And since those have the same denominator, we can just add up the numerators, 18 over x. So that is some of those two functions. So let's put that in here. 7 plus 18 over x. Okay, now we're asked to find the domain. So for the domain of this, um, notice that, oh, I don't want that, let me undo that. So notice that on this function, seven plus 18 over x, we cannot plug zero in here or we get division by zero. Any other number should work. So we just are gonna say all x, the set of all x such that x cannot be zero. Okay. Now we wanna know what is f minus g of x. So we're gonna take f and then we're gonna subtract from it g, which is this, and then these two just cancel and we're left with just seven, which is just a constant. So we plug that in here, seven, we're done. Now it wants the domain of this. Now this is a little tricky because when, it, when you look at the final output here of seven, you may think, oh, well, there's no problems here. Um, seven, no matter what you plug in for X, you're gonna get seven. Well, you always have to look at the domain before you do any algebraic simplification. So before we cancel these, we have to look, was there anything we couldn't plug in? And obviously you can see here for both of those, you can't plug, in, plug zero in. So again, it's the domain is all X such that X is not equal to zero. Okay. Now we wanna find f times g of x. So this time we're gonna multiply the two functions. Take f and multiply g. And that means distribute through. So we get, uh, let's see, it's like seven over one. So when I multiply nine, nine over x times seven over one, we should get 63 over x. And then plus, now when we multiply these two, we get 81 on top and then x times x is x squared. So that should be the product of the two functions, 63 over x plus 81 over x squared. Now for the domain, we look at this and even before the simplification, again, we cannot plug zero into this. So x can't be zero. All right, now we wanna do f. Um, divided by g. So we want to take the f function and divide by the g function. Now what I'm going to do is use the fact that division is the same as multiplication of the reciprocal. So I'm going to take the top here and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. And now I distribute through. So when I do the 7 times the x over 9, I get 7x over 9. Then plus, now when I multiply these, I get 9x and on the bottom 9x, so that's plus one. And that should be it. 7x over nine plus one. Now for the domain, again, before we did all this algebra, we see that you cannot plug zero into these because you get division by zero. So x can't be zero. Okay. Uh, now we want to know what is f plus g of 9. So that just means go back up to what f, f plus g was. That was the very first problem. And plug 9 in here. So 18 divided by 9 is 2. And 2 plus 7 is 9. So we should get 9. Now we want to know what f minus g of 2 is. So we go up to our answer for f minus g, which was part b. And notice on this one, no matter what we plug in, we just get seven. So we get seven. Okay, and then what's F times G of three? So we go back up to our answer for F times G. Here was F times G. We plug three into this. So 63, we divide that by three, and then three squared is nine. 
63 divided by 3 is 21, plus 81 divided by 9 is 9, so we should get 30 here. And then finally, f divided by g of 3. So we go to our answer for f divided by g, which is this one, and we plug 3 in here. So 3 times 7 is 21. And 21 divided by 9 is not something we can do. Well, we can reduce the fraction. Uh, 3 goes into both of those, 7 over 3 plus 1. And then get a common denominator, add these two together. Um, so you should get 10 thirds. So 10 thirds. And that's it. OK, I'm going to close this. and. Let me move to the next question. So we're going to be doing the same things we just did, but we're going to be doing it for two different uh, uh, two different functions. So these functions are a little more complicated. We've got 2x plus 9 over 9x minus 2 plus the g function 8x over 9x minus 2. These happen to have the same denominator, so we just add up the numerators, 2x plus 9 plus 8x, all over the common denominator, 9x minus 2. And that gives us 10x plus 9 all over 9x minus 2. And that's it. So I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to create a fraction. The top will be 10x plus 9. And the bottom will be 9x minus 2. Did it not check this? What happened? What happened? Didn't take it. What's going on? Ten x plus nine divided by nine x minus two. What in the world is going on? Close this. Okay, I have no idea what's happening here. Oh, you know what? Well, I don't know why it's not doing, like letting me know what's going on. 10x plus 9 over 9x minus 2. What? This is a little frustrating. There's nothing I can do here. Let me see here. See if it does this one. Uh, 14x plus 9 over 9x. See, it's doing that. I don't know what the heck. OK, let me clear this. So for this, what I did is, since these have the same denominators, I added them together. So I added 5x plus 9 plus 9x. That gave me 14x plus 9 over the common denominator. Now, the domain is everything as long as the denominator is not 0. So I need to go figure out when is this 0. So that's what I want to know. So I just move the 5 to the other side and then divide both sides by 9. So we know that 5 ninths, if we try and plug that in, we're going to get division by 0. So our x is all our answers are all x's except for 5 over 9. And remember, you don't have to worry about the numerator being 0, because it's OK to have the numerator 0. You just can't have the denominator 0. All right, so now let's try and subtract these. So they have the same denominator, so I just subtract the numerators, 5x plus 9 minus 9x all over the common denominator. <clears throat> 5x take away 9x is negative 4x plus 9 all over 9x minus 5. So that should be this. So negative 4x plus 9, oops, plus 9 over 9x plus 5, or minus 5. Okay, now the domain, same thing. We cannot have the denominator being zero. So we did that in the previous problem. X cannot be 5 ninths. 
All right, now multiplication. This one's gonna be a little tricky. So what we need to do now is we need to take 5x plus 9 over 9x minus 5 and multiply it times 9x over 9x minus 5. Now on the top, we have to FOIL, or not FOIL, distribute that out. On the bottom, we have to FOIL those, although I'm not going to FOIL them. I'm just going to write the bottom as 9 minus, or 9x minus 5 squared. And on the top, I distribute through, I get 45x and then plus 80, I'm oh, sorry, x squared plus 81x. Okay, now from this, computer should take that answer. So 45x squared plus 81x over in parentheses, 9x minus 5 squared. Okay, now the domain. Well, again, before we did any algebra, right, this is what we had, and we can't have the denominator being zero. We already know what it takes to make that zero. If x is 5 ninths, so we're going to be the same thing as before. X cannot be 5 ninths. All right, now division. So when we do division, we're going to take the 5x plus 9 over 9x minus 5. Divide that by 9x over 9x minus 5. Okay, uh, division of two fractions is the same as multiplication of the reciprocal. So we just reciprocated that and put it up there. Notice that these 9x minus 5s cancel. And then you're left with 5x plus 9 over 9x. Okay, so I'm going to put that in. <clears throat> 5x plus 9 over 9x. Okay, now domain, we have to be careful. We have to look at it before we did any of this canceling. So on the bottom, we still have the 9x minus 5s, and we have a 9x. So we know that x cannot be 5 ninths. We already know that x can't be 5 ninths. But we also have that x cannot be 0, because if we x is 0, then this would be 0, and that would be division by 0. So um, let's see how, let's see if it takes this. Let's see. I want all x such that x is not equal to 5 ninths. Oops, 5 ninths. Okay. And comma, x is not equal to 0. Let's see if it takes that. Oh, it did. Okay, good. So just put a comma between those two. All right. Now, what's f plus g of 3? Will we go up to what f plus? G was, that's this, we plug three into this. So three times 14, 30, 42, plus nine over, plug three into the bottom, 27 minus five. So 51 over 22, we should get 51 over 22. Hmm. Okay, what's, F minus G of four, so what was F minus G? Um, here was F minus G. We want to plug four in here. So plug four in there, we get negative 16 plus nine, and then over, plug four into the bottom, we get 36 minus five. So on the top, we get negative seven, and on the bottom, uh, 31, negative seven over 31. Seven over 31. All right, what's f times g of one? All right, so we need to go f times g, which is right here. And we just need to plug one in. That should be easy because one squared is one. So this should just be 45 plus 81 over, let's see, if we plug one in right there, we get nine minus five, which is four, and four squared is 16. So we get that. Okay, 126 over 16, let's see, two goes into each of those, 63 over eight, eight goes into 63, nine times, oh uh, no, hold on, nine times eight is 73, doesn't go in there. Okay, so we'll just leave it. All right, let's try it, 63 over eight. Okay. 
F divided by G of four. So our answer for F divided by G was this, and we need to plug four into it. So if we plug four into here, we get 20 plus nine is 29. Four on the bottom is 36. Go with that, 29 over 36. Okay, I think we're done. Close that, let me move to the next question. And it's not letting me do these, so I'm gonna to have to do a similar question and then do that. One. Okay, so we wanna find the difference quotient for that function. So the main idea here is that we need to really find out what this is. That's the hardest part, so let me do that. What is f of x plus h? Well, that is this function with x plus h plugged in for x. So we get x plus h squared minus five times x plus h, have to have that in parentheses, then plus five. Now what we do is square x plus h. So we have to do x plus h times itself, which we will have to FOIL and distribute the five through. So negative five x minus five h plus five. When I FOIL this, I get x squared plus x h plus, plus x h again, plus h squared. Now I'm just trusting that you can do this. And then we still have minus 5x minus 5h plus 5. And last thing, I can put those xh's together, these two. There's two of them. So 2xh plus h squared minus 5x minus 5h plus 5. OK, nothing goes together here. Nothing cancels. That is what f of x plus h is. So now we're going to try and figure out what this is. So we know that the top left corner of this fraction is what we just got, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5x <clears throat> minus 5h plus 5. Okay, that's just this. Now we want to subtract from that, that's this minus sign, f of x, but f of x is just the original function. But I want to subtract the whole thing, which means I need it in parentheses. And then we want to divide all of that by h. Okay, so now, next step, what I'm gonna do is distribute the negative sign through. And so I will get x squared plus two xh plus h squared minus five x minus five h plus five minus x squared plus five x minus five, all of that divided by h. And then we should get good things to happen. So that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. I think that's all that cancels. So what am I left with? Let me get rid of all this. Okay, what am I left with? I'm left with 2xh plus h squared minus 5h. That's all that was left on top. But all of that's still divided by h. And I notice that on top, I can factor an H out of each term because we have a GCF, right? A greatest common factor of H. And that's good because these H's cancel. And that leaves us with just what was in the parentheses. And that right there is the difference quotient simplified. And that should be our answer. So 2X plus 2H minus 5. Oh, no. Oh, no. What did I do? Oh, sorry, that's not a two there. I'm glad I caught that quick. Right here, uh, right uh, here. Remember that was a one, so that should just be um, H, not two H. Okay. All right, so I'm done with that one. Close it, clear it, and next question. All right, now we need the difference quotient for this one. I need to ask for a similar question. All right, so here we go. Um, again, I'm gonna go figure out what the f of x plus h is first. And here's the function I'm using. So this is gonna be eight over x plus h. I'm replacing x with x plus h squared. And that's it. I mean, I could expand that, but I'm gonna leave it. And now I'm ready to do this, this difference quotient, okay? So f of x plus h is what we just found. Then I want to subtract from that. That's the subtraction sign, f of x. And f of x is just 8 over x squared. But then I want to divide the whole thing by h, right? 
the whole thing by H, that's this. Okay, now on the numerator, we need to put those together. So very tricky part here, we're gonna get a common denominator, multiply the top and bottom here by X squared, that's the other denominator. And then by X plus H squared, which is the denominator on the other one. Now, when we do that, we should get, okay, so when we multiply eight times X squared, we, oh, sorry, yeah, eight times X squared, we get eight X squared. And then we have minus, and then eight times X plus H squared. So eight times X plus H squared. Then all of that is on top of their common denominator, which is X squared times X plus H squared. Okay, now things are gonna look nasty here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just ask us to go look at what this is. Okay, so this is eight but we have to square X plus H. Now I did that in the previous problem. And when you square that, you get this. I'm not showing that work, but that's what you get if you square it. And then you distribute eight through it. So you should get eight X squared plus 16. Oh, I forgot the H there. Um, plus 16 X H plus eight, uh, eight, eight H squared. That's what this is in, in that reddish pink color. But now we need to subtract, so we need to distribute through with the minus sign. So we have eight X squared, that's this one right here. And then minus, now all these signs change. So we get minus eight, eight X squared, minus 16 XH, minus eight H squared, then all over our common denominator, which is X squared X plus H times X plus H squared. But then all of that is still divided by H. I know this looks terrible, but here's where we um, start to get the good stuff. So this goes away. And so what we're left with, as I run out of room here, what we're left with now is um, in the numerator over here, we have negative 16xh minus 8h squared over our common denominator x squared times x plus h squared, but then all of that divided by h. And notice on this, you could factor an h out of both of those. Again, we finally have a GCF. So when we do this, we'll pull the h out. I'll be left with negative 16x minus 8h all over the common denominator. and all of that over H. And then here's where the good stuff happens. H's go away. If you can't see that, just look at this as H over one and then do the whole like flip it and put one over H here like that and get rid of it. And then you can see that those H's would cancel. Same thing. Okay, so this is it, this is our answer. So let me try and plug this in. We have a fraction. We have negative 16 X minus 8h over x squared times x plus h squared. Check it. Well done. All right, close that. Next problem. And clear. All right, here we go. Same thing, difference quotient for this. Ooh, this looks bad. So let's find this part because this is always the tricky part. Plug X plus H into the function. So five times X plus H over X plus H plus five. This is the same as five X plus five H distributing the five across the top over X plus H plus five. Okay, that's it. That's what, that's what F of X plus H is. So now let's go ahead and put this together. So this is gonna be what we just got. Five X plus five H over x plus h plus five minus, that's the minus sign, f of x, which is the original function, but then all of that over h, that's this part here. Okay, so now again, let's get a common denominator. So I have to multiply this by the other denominator, x plus five, and the x plus five here. And then over here, we have to multiply, unfortunately, by x plus h plus five, the other denominator. 
and then I'll multiply across the bottom. Now, this is only one term, so I don't need parentheses around it. That's just going to distribute through. So let's see if we can do this. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together. So I'm going to foil here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. So the first multiplication, x times uh, 5x is 5x squared. And then x times 5h is 5xh. And then 5 times 5x is 25x. And then 5 times 5h is 25h. And that's these two multiply. Then I do minus, and then I'm going to distribute this. So minus, let me go ahead and distribute. I'll do the minus later. 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times h is 5xh. And 5x times 5 is 25x. Now, that's, that's just those tops multiplied out. We still have the common denominator below those. That's a pretty straight line, um, which is dx plus 5 times dx plus h plus 5. I'm not going to do anything with those because I really just want this h to cancel. OK, so I'm going to try and save us a step here. Notice that if I distribute this negative through, right, what really happens is that we lose the parentheses. And then everything that was plus becomes minus. So that's a minus, that's a minus, that's a minus. And when we do that, we can see that the 25x's go away, the 5x squareds go away, and the 5xh's go away. So all that's left on top, let's see, all that's left on top is a 25h over the common denominator, x plus 5 times x plus h plus 5, then all of that over h. And that's real good because that h and that h go away. And so we're there. We have the 25 on top over, in parentheses, x plus 5 times x plus h plus 5. Oh, I didn't ask for a similar problem on this one. OK, well, it's right. Okay, next. Oh, another one. Are there any more? How many more are there? Okay, so there's three more. Let's go. Okay, so for this one, I have to ask for some more questions so I can check my answer. All right, so they give you a hint here, and I'm glad they give you this hint. First thing we got to do is what we've been doing. Let's figure out what f of x plus h is. Okay, so we just plug x plus h into the function for x. So it's x plus h then minus 15. Well, that doesn't look so bad until we try and rewrite this whole thing. So it'll be the f of x plus h, which we just found, minus f of x, which is just square root of x minus 15, then all of that over the h, okay, from the formula. All right, now, the only way we can do this, they give us a hint, rationalize the numerator. So this is just a trick, okay? Doesn't make sense why we do this, but once we do it, you'll see why it works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by one, but it's a very special one. It is x plus h minus 15, but instead of a minus, we're gonna put plus, this is known as the conjugate. And whatever we do to the top, we have to do to the bottom. Now, you may be asking yourself, like, why are we doing this? You'll see here in a moment why this works. So now that we've got this, we can just we can multiply this out. We can do this times this. Notice that these are the same root, same things under the root. So if we multiply them together, we square it. And squaring them gets rid of the square root. So what we're left with is just the x plus h minus 15. Now the critical step. If we do this times this, we will get square root of x plus h uh, minus 15 times the square root of x plus, or sorry, x minus 15. That's what we get if we did this multiplication. Then if we do this multiplication on the inside here, we'll have the same two things multiplied as these, but we'll have a negative in front. So we'll have negative square root of x plus h minus 15 
times square root of x plus uh, x minus 15. So when we do that and put them together, add them, they kill each other off. So there is no, nothing that we get out of the middle multiplications. So the only thing we're left with is this last multiplication, which again, you have the square root of x minus 15 times itself. And so you square it and square root goes away. But because this is pos positive and this one's negative, we should get a minus and then whatever was underneath the square root, which was the x minus 15. Now, all of that is over this h times this. Now, I'm not going to multiply the h through. I'm just going to leave it because eventually what we want is for the h to cancel up top. So I'm just going to leave it. And notice on the top, if we distribute the minus through right here, if we distribute, it's going to turn that x into a minus x, and it's going to turn that 15 into a positive, or negative 15 to positive 15. And then we get the x's to cancel and the 15s to cancel. And the only thing we're left with on top is an H. So we can reduce that H and H, this turns into a one. So all, our, all we have left with is, all we are left with is a one on top and then just that stuff in the parentheses. X plus H minus 15 plus square root of X minus 15. And that should be our difference quotient. Let's try it in here. Fraction one over the square root of x plus h minus 15, move to the right, plus another square root of x minus 15. Okay, we're getting there. That was a weird one. Okay, express the area of a rectangle as a function of the width if the width of a rectangle is twice its length. Okay, what? Okay, so they're telling us we have a rectangle, it has a length and it has a width. We know the area of a rectangle's length times width. They want us to express the area as a function of the width if the width of the rectangle is twice the length. So we know that the width, okay, is equal to twice the length. So we want this area to be something with just the only thing we want to see in here are w's. The reason why we know that is because it says express the area as a function of w, which means we don't want an l in here. We just want w's in here. But we know that w is twice the length, which means if we divide both sides by two or take half of both sides, we know that the length then would be half the width. So we could rewrite this length as half the width times, and then this is the width, which means we have half the width squared. So the area is half the width squared for this particular rectangle. Now, that is, our er that is the area expressed in terms of W or as a function of W. So I'm gonna put one half W, oh, w squared. See if that, oh, I forgot to sum up. That should be good though. Next. Okay. Um, let's see. If a rock falls from a height of 47 meters on Earth, the height in meters after x seconds is approximately given by this function. So they give us this function that tells us how high something is after a certain amount of time has gone by if this rock was falling from 47 meters. So it says, what is the height of the rocket when x is one at when x is 1.1 seconds? So here all they want is what happens when you plug in 1.1 for x? So 47 minus 4.9 times 1.1 squared. So we need our calculators for this. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna let you do this problem because um, I wanna move on to the next homework assignment. This is the last question. Yeah. So I think I'm just gonna move on. Um, let's call it done. Okay, stop recording, yes.